I'm sure we can all think of people, situations, circumstances, jobs that we can describe as toxic. Situations that just aren't good for us. Somebody or something that isn't healthy for us. Yet, oftentimes we find ourselves in the middle of the toxicity. Or we find ourselves trying to get away only to find ourselves caught up in some mess all over again. Sometimes it's caused by childhood trauma. And other times, somebody is inflicting negativity in our lives right now. But today, we're going to look at how to escape the people and things that are determined to take us out. And we're going to talk about turning away from toxicity. Coming up next on The Trifling Ones. All right, we're going to read from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 23 and 24, coming from the New Living Translation. And it says, Instead, let the Spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. So today we're going to draw upon two points from this letter written to the church in Ephesus. And the first of those points is the Spirit has revealed our toxicity. The Spirit has revealed our toxicity. So verse 23 says, instead, or in the King James Version, it says, and. Regardless of which word it is that's being used, the bottom line is that the word here is a conjunction. And a conjunction is a word that joins or connects one sentence or clause to another one. So when you see a word like instead or and, it means that you got to pay attention not only to what comes after it, but what comes before it. And so verse 23 says, instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. But if we're talking about instead, then we've got to contrast that with, with what came beforehand. So let's take a look at what, what verses 17 through 22 says. We find out that Paul is saying that we can't live the same way that non-believers do. He describes them as Gentiles here. Then he goes on to say that they're darkened in their understanding and they're separated from God. And he also says that they've lost sensitivity as it relates to the things of God and they indulge in all kinds of impurity and sensuality. And, And then he finally says that we're corrupted by deceitful desires. So what Paul is saying is that we're we're steeped in toxic behaviors, like we're caught up in all kinds of stuff that we probably shouldn't be. So he's saying that we were surrounded by stuff that wasn't good. It, it's not healthy at all for us. But the funny thing is this, in some instances, it didn't even seem that bad back then. When you, when you look back, now you may say, oh, that wasn't healthy. But the stuff that we thought was okay back then ain't so okay no more. Some of us grew up in toxic homes and we thought that that's just how life was. We, we thought that that's the way it was supposed to be. Some of us, we spent time around toxic people and we, we knew that something wasn't right. But we justified behaviors. We ignored being slapped. We ignored being jumped on. We ignored being spoken to any kind of way. We ignored being demeaned. Why? I don't know, but maybe it was because we we loved them. And we would remind ourselves of the times when things were good. At that time, it was it was nothing to walk into a store and claim the five-finger discount. It was nothing to go to a party and then take somebody home that we barely knew. And it was just par for the course to go to church and have folks chastise us, not because they actually loved us or cared about us, but because they thought they were holier than thou. Some of us are going back and forth with our baby mama or our baby daddy, and and the environment is nothing short of poisonous or toxic. Busting out a car window or kicking in a door seems like a normal response based on what's happening around us, but it ain't good for us. 
when we talk about toxicity, it's something that's detrimental, something that, that's harmful to us. But it's not like a blunt force. It's not something that just knocks you out or takes you out. It's a little more subtle. Like when somebody leaves the car running in the garage, the fumes are toxic. They're deadly, but the victim just falls asleep. It's, it's there and it has a negative impact. It has a negative effect, but it isn't all in your face. But verse 23 says, instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and your attitudes. See, when the spirit of God shows up in our lives, we start looking at past behaviors and, and ask ourselves, we start saying, yo, did I really get down like that? We allow him to help us grow beyond the dysfunction. Instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts. The spirit has revealed our toxicity. The stuff that was once acceptable don't feel so good no more because God has shown us a better way. So the spirit has revealed our toxicity. The second point, however, is the spirit will renew our thoughts. The spirit will renew our thoughts. Verses 23 and 24 says, instead, let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes. Put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. What we're being told here is that we can't do this on our own, but the spirit can help us through it. Toxic environments won't cease to exist because you've found Jesus. Nope. The environments are going to continue to try you. People will keep on peopling. What happens if he or she never changes? What happens if the hood don't change? What happens if your partner who got locked up is getting out and he's still talking about running scams? What happens then? Those things in many instances are going to stay the same. But I asked the question, what will change? You. The text doesn't say anything about he, him, she, her, them, or they. It says that the Spirit of God will change you. He will renew your thoughts and attitudes. The Spirit of God will create a new nature in you, which is truly righteous and holy. So you're broken because mom or dad weren't there for you and you developed toxic behaviors as a result. You've never developed a healthy coping mechanism, so you developed a porn addiction for satisfaction. You, you can't trust anybody because your heart has been broken. You're loud and aggressive because you're really afraid of somebody taking advantage of you, but you don't want anybody to know that. You constantly cheat because it's what you saw in your home when you were growing up. Most of us got something toxic going on on the inside. What's yours? But it doesn't have to remain that way. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31, which is a little bit further down in the same text, says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words and slander, as well as all types of evil. The Spirit will renew our thoughts. Think about that toxic thing now and ask the Spirit of God to renew your attitudes towards it. It isn't good for you. It's unhealthy. It's holding you back. It's keeping you from becoming better. Try for once family. Remember, the Spirit will reveal our toxicity. It'll help us see the stuff that we gotta let go. But then the spirit will renew our thoughts. And it's through this process that we can truly turn away from toxicity. Heavenly Father, we come before you now. We recognize that there are things about our existence. That we recognize that there are things that we've been exposed to, situations, circumstances, environments. We've gone through trauma. We have struggled in particular areas. And as a result, we have allowed toxicity to reign in our lives unchecked. We're asking that your divine spirit reveal those things to us so that we can make the appropriate changes. But we know that we can't do it on our own. 
And so after the toxicity is revealed, we ask that our thoughts be renewed, that you would allow us to think differently, to perceive differently, to make the types of decisions that will change our course. We're asking, dear God, that you would meet us at our need and that we would become better for you. Finally, Lord, we, as always, recognize that we're trifling. We've made mistakes and we're sorry. Please forgive us, receive us, and use us. All of this we ask in your Son and our Savior. Jesus Christ's name we pray. And all of the trifling ones said, Amen. Thank you.